Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? You know how I am? How are you? I'm great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I've uh, I've had some uh, time at home because a, a of a rare no Saturday off. How about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you but it's like, been you didn't like being at home the extra time. No, I did. It was uh, I, I got some rest and uh, still did the work I had to do. Oh, well, there comes another dog, and uh, no people scouted. Um, uh, so I've, uh, I've, uh, I've done, I've, I've had a very nice time. Lois and I got some things done around the house that, so it's been pretty good Conrad, but I've missed, uh, I missed collision. I missed, uh, my friends on collision, but I'm glad to be back. We're glad you're back here. We love catching up with you each and every week. Had a great time last week with, uh, our pal Dylan, uh, check that out in the archives. We visit some of uh, Hornswoggle's greatest hits, if you will. Wow. And, uh, we're going to be playing a lot of stings greatest hits in the coming weeks, man. We are home stretching it for stings last match. If you haven't already go grab those tickets now, AEWTIX.com. It's going to be here before you know it. Of course, appreciate everybody tuning in to dynamite tonight where you'll see Tony Schiavone and maybe we'll see sting. Uh, but we do know for sure that we've got an absolutely loaded card. Uh, we should also mention that this Saturday. Another collision. You're back on the road, back at it. And then next Wednesday, we're only like a week away as folks are listening to this. AEW in Huntsville. How about that, Tony? Sting's last what? television appearance on uh, either Dynamite or Collision. Both are going down Wednesday, February 28th in Huntsville, Alabama. I'll be there. You should be too. AEWTIX.com. This is going to be fun, man. The home stretch for Sting's last match. What are we doing in Huntsville? What the hell? Now, uh, hanging okay. out with me uh, and going to <laughs> going to Rosie's, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Comedy club still there? It's still there, yes, sir. Stand up yeah. live, doing their thing. Yeah, I saw uh, Andrew Dice Clay there with you. It was pretty cool. Uh, Cheap plug, hell, our buddy on... Cassio's there tomorrow. That's what Cassio's there tomorrow. To this. Yeah. So if you're listening to this on Wednesday. Tomorrow on Thursday, Cassio Kid will be at Stand Up Live. Yeah, Jr. and I were there. Remember one time on stage. Yep. So uh, it's a fun cool. day. But yeah, so yeah, look forward to being uh, back at the uh, Propes Center. I guess the uh, is that what it's called now, the Prope Center. Yeah, Propes Arena or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So what what happened to the uh, what happened to the one that was named after uh, the? Uh, it's how come they. Don't, it's still it all named that, but they've added to it. So they have a Mars oh. music hall and they have a Mark C. Smith concert hall. Oh, wow. And they, blah, blah, blah. So they've just continued to expand and add. So they've got like this rhythm on Monroe rooftop restaurant and all that. All of it together is called the Von Braun Center, which is what you're familiar with. But yeah. The Von, actual Von arena Braun. is the Probst Arena. Got it. And I guess Probst was one of our first billionaires up here in North Alabama. He had some drug manufacturing company. I think, I mean, it started out as just a drugstore, but then eventually he got into the real biz. And, uh, I think he's running around town in one of, uh, Sam Walton's old jets. So he's done. Okay. Well, I guess he has. Yeah. It's just fine. And of course, Huntsville has, has been named in many lists as one of the top places to live in America. Yeah, it's the fastest growing city in Alabama, and it's sort of a uh, cultural oasis, I suppose, from the rest of Alabama because of Redstone Arsenal. So you've got, right. you know, we lead the country in things like uh, we have more PhDs per capita than anywhere else in the country, but we also lead wow. the nation in divorce and DUIs. So we're really smart people who make really poor life choices. Well, we look forward to being there, really do. And uh, it is the go home shows for. Uh, for our big event, dynamite and collision go home yep. before AEW revolution stings last match. That's what everybody knows it as AEWTIX.com. I know what you're thinking. Tickets are sold out. Well, here's the thing. As you get closer and closer, they have these things called production kills. So don't think you're squeezed out just yet. I know for sure this happened in Huntsville, Tony. A lot of my friends said, Hey, I wanted to go to AEW, but tickets are sold out. They're not sold out. They just hadn't released all the tickets or put them on sale yet. So check back. 
uh, because tickets are still available for both Huntsville and a handful for Greensboro. And if I had to bet a few more from Greensboro will open up, I won't be in Greensboro, but I'm not going to miss it on pay-per-view. It's going to be an emotional night. Sting's last match. Is it not? Right? Yeah. In many ways it's going to be, uh, Sting's family is going to be there. He's invited a couple of his friends there. So, uh, it is, it's going to be an emotional night for me and it's going to be an emotional night for Ric Flair. Who's going to be there as well. So, and the fact that if you think about Sting and Flair and Clash of the Champions, and I was there to call it, and how much the Greensboro Coliseum means to me as a wrestling fan, because that was my go-to place uh, during all my fandom years back in the 70s, uh, it has, uh, means a lot to me. So with that in mind, I, I really personally look forward to this night. You, um, I know you're not one to do this sort of thing, but you really ought to get a picture of you and, and Rick and sting in front of the Greensboro Coliseum. Y'all should do a photo together. That would be cool. I mean, just for your personal collection, I'm not saying yeah. for everybody else, but, and I, I wish, you know, thoughts and prayers to our buddy, Jim Ross, he's still on the comeback trail. But right. man, I know he really wanted to call that match. I don't know that that's going to be possible. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, thoughts and prayers with Jr. But man, to know that you and him worked together, one of the first times y'all worked together was calling Sting and Flair in right. Greensboro at the first clash. To think that there was almost a chance to do that again, and maybe there still right. is. Let's cross our fingers. Wouldn't yeah. that be I something? Think I, I think I said yeah, it would be great. I wanted to do that match with Jr. Yeah, did. yeah. Um. I think, I think I said 87, it was 88 when we called them. So yeah. Um, heads up to WrestleMania four. Right. And Jr. and I had been working together less than a year. We did, we had done some things. He had started on TBS with us. So it was a good time. It was uh great memories. I'm so glad I've said this many times. I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of Sting's career, Flair's career and many wrestlers career. Um, Arn Tully. Barry Wyndham, Midnight Express, Jim Cornette, all of that. Take a, if you see some of the photos of them, there I am holding the microphone. Uh, it's uh, It was a wonderful time. The 80s were a wonderful time in my career. And, Conrad, I know you were merely a kid in the 80s, a youngster. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, but the 80s are my favorite time. Uh, my favorite decade. And I, I didn't really grow up during the eighties. I grew up during the seventies, but in the eighties, I got married and the music was wonderful. I had great movies that I remember. Lois and I went to a couple of concerts. We were raising children. I, she, she was raising children more than I was because I was, uh, on the road with a baseball team for a while. And then with baseball and wrestling and then baseball left. In wrestling, so I was on the road a lot, but I really, really miss the '80s. To the point, I was telling her this the other day: when I dream a lot, I dream of the '80s. So it was a great time. '80s just was a great time. It was a great time to be a wrestling fan because that's when TBS, on a national level, became a big deal for wrestling fans. So it was a good time, and I miss it every day. And there, that's when I met Sting. That's when I met Flair. That's when I worked with those guys. So I really miss the 80s. I do. Well, I know what else you miss about the 80s. How hard you could get that ding dong, Daddy. But thankfully, Blue Chew is here. And uh, can you imagine if this was really around during the 80s? Let's call it 86 when wrestlers would go on TV and talk about the Marriott. Boy, Space Mountain would have just been known as Blue Chew. Yeah. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process couldn't be simpler, guys. You sign up at BlueChew.com, you consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And here's the best part. It's all done online. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. 
And Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code WHW at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. The promo code is WHW and you'll receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast and Tony's Wiener. Do you realize, uh, have I had, I had blue chew back in the eighties, how many kids I may have, right? It'd be crazy, dude. Can you imagine how many of them would also work for, uh, AEW? Hopefully none. Hey, have you ever ha- heard a turtle have sex? <laughs> nah, that's what it sounds like. It, hang on. Hang on, here we go. Stop it. What? That's what it sounds like. Turn that but turn that bullshit off. He's wearing an elf. Oh, he's really getting it going now. Oh god. He's got a rhythm. All right, those turtle sounds were brought to you by bluechew.com. Uh, love to hear your noises next week on the show, Tony, if you want to go ahead and click. <laughs> hey, uh, we're what, gonna, what, 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 what would, uh, what would possess anyone to do those sounds, put those sounds on our podcast? Those what, were, rele- what relevance do they have? Those were actual turtles. I don't give a shit. What? Why? I like turtles. <laughs> Hey, we're having fun here today and uh, playing a little grab ass. We're going to be watching a, a deep cut from 1991, yeah. but before we do, yeah. okay. You know, when I think of 1991, I think of really bad gimmicks. I think of things like Oz. I think of things like the chamber of horrors. Right. And I think of things like Arachna man. Okay. You remember Arachna man? Yes, I do. So it was like a fake knockoff Spider-Man, right? Yes, it was. Are you okay? I got Lois here. She's going to do the countdown live. Oh, great. Well, anyway, what I wanted to show you is we've got, we've got a, uh, a special clip that I found on social media that happened over the weekend that I got tagged in. You got tagged in. Hang on. It's not what you expect. Okay. Our crack producer, they crack because he knows a guy. He's got a clip here that you won't believe what you're about to see. Okay. I can't wait. We're going to roll the clip. <laughs> what is going on? What the hell? What just happened? Oh! Oh! Tony, that's a fan in the crowd. Good God. That's a fan from the crowd, Tony, dressed up like Spider Man. Uh huh. And I guess security just thought, well, this is part of the show. Why else would there be a really large Spider Man? Right here. And then they, then they realized it was well, when he started throwing that chick around, I think they realized, Hey, wait a minute. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Yeah. That, that didn't supposed to happen. Isn't that wild. Yeah. Is Lois here? Just put her on the headset, Tony. Huh? Just, just slide her to the microphone, put her on the headset, put the headset on. Hey, yeah, Lois. Your, hey, Lois. How are you? I'm fine, Conrad. How are you doing? Man, I'm, I'm better than I deserve. I like we're doing like a George Steinbrenner right now where we can hear your voice. We can't see you. It's very Seinfeld. I love it. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, well, well, Miss Lois, I, uh, I need to take a time out right now and tell everybody about a product that I know you love from the amazing And when you use our promo code wrestle, you get 20% off. Your body will thank you. I'm talking to you. If you need some help sleeping, 
I really recommend these infused oils. And, and, and the reality is CBN has benefits for sleep and CBN can reduce the time it takes to fall asleep, making it helpful for individuals who have difficulty initiating sleep. I just recently got my dad on this. He has for as long as I've known him, went to bed around 10 o'clock, woke up around one o'clock, fell asleep in the recliner around four o'clock. I mean, it was just a restless uh-huh. existence. We hooked him up with the amazing kind.com. I told him about our promo code wrestle. He not only got 20% off, but he got exactly what he needed to help him focus and help him get some sleep. CBG will help you focus. CBD will help reduce anxiety and CBN will help you sleep. Well, my dad wanted to focus during the day, but he wanted to sleep at night. So we hooked him up. The amazing kind had everything he needed. And we really believe in this. First of all, fellow who created this, he's a former producer and editor for the WWE. He worked on commercials and marketing. So he's a wrestling nerd like us, but these infused oils are made from all natural sun grown hemp. And they're infused with nutrient dense MCT oil. My dad loves it. You will too. Try it right now at the amazing kind.com and be sure to use our promo code wrestle. You'll get 20% off. The amazing kind is your hookup for plant-based pain relief, balms, creams, and gels for your muscles and joints. But what my dad loves the most are the infused oils for mood support and sleep specifically. He got it hooked up at the amazing He got 20% off with the promo code wrestle and you can too. Lois, this was a real treat having you on the program. And well, it's a real treat finding out about the product because I want some and I want Tony to order it. For me. Well, I know what to do. Just use that promo code, Tony. We'll get you 20% off, but Lois, I know and then th- and ask them too, if they have them dog i know for sure that you don't um you're not exactly the hugest wrestling fan can we agree on that maybe you're not super wrestling well okay yeah but i mean you do know that there are some good people in wrestling right oh yeah i married one well that's debatable but he is in wrestling i guess that's that part's true but good Let me introduce you to someone that you may be very familiar with. I know our audience is your soon to be friend and certainly mine, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ian from ring of honor. Ian, what's going on, man? How are you, dude? Hey, Conrad. Hey, Tony. Hi, Lois. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. (laughs) Oh, it's very nice to meet you. I've heard lots of great things from Tony and, um, I just, I love, I love hanging around Tony. I got to share a, a couple special moments this summer. We had a blast in Calgary and Whoa. we had a, a really special moment in the Greensboro Coliseum, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about later today, but, but it's, it's so nice to meet you. I thank you. I've been listening to Tony's podcast. I've been watching Tony, uh, since even before this event that we're about to watch again here today. And he's really meant, he's meant a lot to me as a, as a fellow broadcaster and, He's meant a lot to a lot of people over the years. So it's, it's really cool to be, be part of this here today. Oh, that's really neat. That not, those are about 20, not uh, very many people say nice things about him. Really. What the hell? Hey, so, uh, Ian, uh, is <laughs> uh, uh, it... thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice Ian's to meet you. Friend. He's a good friend of Matt Shivani's too. He and Matt are very. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Any friends of my kids are friends of mine. No. Oh. We're, yeah. we're planning on going to see the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies mix it up down in Philadelphia this year. So, oh, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where do you live? Where do you? So I'm I'm from where uh, some of Tony's family's from. I'm from the Lehigh Valley. I'm from Allentown, oh. Pennsylvania. Well, and there you go. There you go. Yeah, you can get me talking for hours, and I've gotten in trouble on AEW for bringing up Allentown too much. I'm like Conrad with. Uh, Conrad's very proud of being from Alabama. I'm very proud from being from uh, the great state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, I used to live in Pittsburgh or near Pittsburgh. Um, it is a great state. And Allentown, that area, the Poconos, where Tony's family's from, beautiful. Oh, beautiful it's, country. Yeah. It's wonderful. And we have, we have so many parks and we have great schools for the kids out here. And it's just, it's, it's perfect in my opinion. But I, I'd, I'd love to get down to get down to Alabama and get and be there for dynamite next week. We'll see, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great up here. I love it. 
Yeah. Well, it's good to meet you. I'm going to turn everything over. Whoa, whoa, hang on now. These guys, <laughs> wait, 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 what? We're going to watch Halloween Havoc 1991, Lois, and we've got it all oh, locked and loaded my on our God. side. Is you that don't the have one to. Where the kids were in? I don't think that so. That Halloween Havoc? Oh, I think that was 92 or 93. You're close. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's in the Halloween Havocs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but what we need is, is we need your countdown. See, so I I've got it loaded on my side and I know Ian and Tony do on theirs. Uh, we're watching Halloween havoc 1991. So if you're listening along with us, we want you to pull up what they're calling season three, episode one on Peacock. So it's Halloween havoc season three, episode one. And we're going to watch Halloween Havoc 1991 together. But Lois, you got a special countdown for us. A live Lois countdown. How about that? Spooky or witchy? He, both. <laughs> How about okay. bitchy? Okay. Oh. No. Okay. Let's do a countdown live for okay. Halloween okay. Havoc. Have you got it all yeah. queued for, up? For, yes. I, right there. So for everyone watching on YouTube, the only thing you can see is Lois's right boob. As you can see, it's right there. Okay. That's the left. Okay. Mask. Okay. Okay. I was going to say it used to be here and it's now there. Oh, listen so. to you. Okay. <laughs> so you ready for your countdown, honey? Or what do you want me to say? I don't care, but you got to sit with me. <gasps> okay. So here's Halloween Havoc where the witches win and Lois <laughs> is going to do it again. So in. One play. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll be honest, I thought that was on the track at first, and then I realized, I no, wait, that's Lois. Yeah, My goodness. Look at these graphics, yeah. Tony. Is this 1991 or what, Ian? Yeah, this is, and, and this is high quality for WCW at the time. There, there's ghostly figures appearing. You don't. In, is, it, in, is, it, is that the one where Tony opens the door and he no. turns off his mask? That's uh, either 92 or 93, like Ian was saying. Oh, oh I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> so call me up when you guys do that. Yes, ma'am. Will do. All right. All right. So I'm out. Thank okay. you, Lois. All right. Love you guys. Love nice you. Meet you. Thank you. Take care. Oh, nice to meet you too. And here's Tony. Oh, brother. You're... I love that <laughs> so much. Hey. I can't believe I got a live Lois countdown. How about that? Oh, brother. We need to listen to this one. What a snake bit show this was. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a tremendous night here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. As we said, four championships will be. You got sun in in your hair right there. Why is that so light? Yeah, I think I'm beginning of sun in. And a lot of controversy surrounds the Chamber of Horror Steel Cage match. Tony, it's up first. It should be a great night, but the excitement started early this afternoon. It started early. Barry Windham was attacked in the area, the parking lot area, will be unable to compete in the Chamber of Hearts. Here's what happened a little bit earlier on here in Chattanooga today. This is the uh, blue chew stiff shot of the week. No, not that picker head, uh, Eric Bischoff, <laughs> but the angle we're about to see in the parking lot. Um, this is an interesting day show. Yeah. I mean, everything about how all this happens. Oh, look at cactus climbing out of the town car with Abdullah. Yeah. I can't really think of two people more, well, more suited for a chamber of horrors match than Abdullah, the butcher and Big Cac Mac. cactus Jack. Yep. Gosh, Cactus Jack what, and Abdullah. What are they shirt and butcher. tie? They're ready. <laughs> he was a fancy. He was a sharp dresser, man. He's a fancy dresser. Yeah, and, and he wasn't I, even supposed to be on this card. That was the crazy part. Wow. So you have you know more about the uh, the inner workings of this than I do. This one, this one confused me as a kid because they advertised something and delivered something completely different. Uh, well, there you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> That was vintage. That was vintage JCP in 1988. Tell you that. <laughs> and of course, this is obviously years afterwards, but, and that's one of the reasons I really think that JCP had, had problems and went down because they would advertise stuff and would not deliver. 
Now so this is this is the, the angle. Way, this, that's Dusty's car, right? That's Dusty's car. That's right. Check this out. I can't wait. Wait, sure. wait a minute. Oh. 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 Hey, what's up? God oh. 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 What a great angle. It was pulled off well. It was a nice way to explain what's happening. I mean, I thought they did a great job on that, Tony. I really do. Yeah, I liked it too. It wasn't the first time we had seen someone attacked in the outside with the car. I mean, Dusty was, remember, years ago with the with the horseman and everything. Oh, yeah. But it was very well done. We had a great crowd. And, Ian, here's something else that happened that night. Game seven of the 1991 World Series that night. Right up the street. Re- yeah. I remember my brother was running back and forth through the house. We had we had one of those those boxes you could obtain at the flea market. And uh, I think the statute of limitations has, has expired on that. Yeah. And, uh, we were running back and forth. He had the twins and Braves on, yeah. I think it was, it was Smoltz and Morris, right? Yeah. And, and not only that, what I remember about it so vividly is that I was able to listen as I'm driving back, there was a WSB radio had the Braves on, but there was a national broadcast that I could pick up and Vin Scully was doing it. So oh, I heard Vince Scully call the last couple of innings of that, which was absolutely wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. On my drive back. Well, here we go. <laughs> there's a, there's the famous switch. Need to tighten up the bolts on that boys. <laughs> Elegante. What uh, Tony, what, what an athlete seven, a uh, legit seven, seven, right? Yeah. And legit, uh, didn't know what the hell he was doing. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> But it's not his fault, right? I mean, he was a, listen, we have a Sutton Singh now and Sutton Singh has a lot of ability. I just hope they uh, work with him to pull it out. And I always did like, I always did like the, uh, the gravestones, uh, the tombstones. I did too. And, yeah. One of them said Minnesota twins, 1991. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there it is on the left. Okay. Uh, on that uh, still shot. If you're watching here on YouTube. So, you know, they did that, uh, the, the, the fake, uh, graveyard with the headstones for MLW at a pay-per-view last year, Tony, and they put my yeah. name on there. Did you really? So I texted court and he sent it to me. So I have my own tombstone now. Which oh, I'm pretty excited about. that's finished. I'll tell you what, my mom watched this with me. My mom and dad did, and they, she wasn't familiar with the diamond stud before uh-huh. the evening, but that was all she could talk about until the, uh, <laughs> the special guest came out later. The phantom uh, came out. Uh, later. Right. <laughs> I mean, this looks amazing. I mean, cactus Jack coming out in full leopard print, walking through the graveyard with the chainsaw. Uh, huh. I mean, Mick Foley understood the mission here. I mean, this sure. looks like it's from a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and- Mick- Go ahead, Ian. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to be in it. It was supposed to be the one man gang, right, Tony? Wasn't that yeah. advertised? Right, right. But hey, good sub. Absolutely. <laughs> right. That's that's a net positive. Yep. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh these two guys in a cage. Nah, I'm gonna stay away from. Them. Vader wasn't <laughs> supposed to be in this either. Right. He, he he's a sub. Uh so Vader subbing for Wyndham. Cactus Jack and Oz trade places. Uh, but it's interesting to think just how loaded this, this opening match is. And it's always made me laugh. Like we're going to electrocute a motherfucker in match one. And Mm -hmm. then in match two, we're going back to arm drag. Yeah. Like, I mean, how do you, as a fan, I would think after this, I would, if I was certainly, if I was a Braves fan, I'd be like, all right, son, we got to hit the road. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> we saw, we saw the, the guys play grab ass now. Now let's go see if the Braves can go from worst to first. <laughs> it's funny that you say we electrocuted a motherfucker because that's exactly, look at this. Oh, wow. Dude, uh, I love that wouldn't. version of Sting. I do too. What I wouldn't give for him to come out like that at revolution. God, it'd be um, so great. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, Dusty and I talked about this match, uh, months afterwards, weeks afterwards, probably months after. And Dusty said, you know, a lot of people criticize that match, but we, ex- we, uh, ex- uh, electrocuted a motherfucker. <laughs> I love that. And I said, yeah, we sure did. <laughs> you, you can't deny that. He said the visual, 
of Abdullah the Butcher in that chair being electrocuted is something I'll never forget. I said, I agree. No, <laughs> nobody will forget that. That's right. Something else I but, didn't forget. Nick Patrick's running around like a fucking goof with a referee camera on. He's got a helmet on with a camera. They were trying new things. This is when instant replay was becoming a thing in sports. And I actually don't hate the idea. I yeah. think it's kind of cool, but boy, right. it sure does look stupid to see him wearing it. It looks like he's an extra from weird science or something. Yeah. Yeah. Jim heard. I remember, you know, heard was famous for saying goddamn candy man. And one, and he was talking about fan scan and fan of the night. And we'll have a goddamn referee camera. I went, what a referee camera. Okay. Go get him, Jim. At least he was, at least he was thinking outside the box, right? I mean, that's a cool view. What we're seeing right there. This feels like yeah. call of duty before we even knew what that was. It's a first yeah. person shooter game before that was really even a thing. Right. May I ask why someone just tumbled out of a casket? <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> that because was those are the druids, got, Ian. Come on. Yeah. Co- <laughs> you sure oh, it's that, not the, sure it's not the black scorpion? Right. Well, it's <laughs> only been a couple months, so <laughs> that's right. People these, coming out the casket. These are the ghouls, I believe. And uh, okay. Brian Clark is going to be known as the Night Stalker. So oh. I guess we're trying to make it sound like we have serial killers from California yeah. here on the roster. Hey, you know what I'm thinking about here, too? And, and I'm, I decline, I forgot to mention this as he's uh, coming to the ring. The Vader headdress. I love and it. And he had so the steam cup. It was, and you know, he stopped using it because he didn't want to carry it everywhere. Yeah. In, in today's wrestling, It'd we be on the truck. It. Yeah. It, we put it in the truck. Absolutely. Can you imagine trying to go through fucking TSA with that Vader helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Just wear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a separate pound down. <laughs> they, they stopped me in Calgary for explosives because of how close we were in collision. Uh, I, apparently I had enough explosive material from the pyro on my suit jacket that was packed away that they, Oh my, they, they yeah, they took it out. They patted it down. They scanned it and gave me all my stuff back. But wow, wow, yeah, yeah, we're very close to a lot of that pyro. Really are. Jeez, look at Sting and Vader. Who knew what was to come with them? Because Vader was relatively brand new. That's right. Here. Yeah, he, he was in and out for a bit, and then he he starts kind of full time here. Yeah, this was uh, bringing in Vader was an Oli idea. I remember was, him talking about bringing him in. It did happen yeah. on the hurt on the herd watch though. I know everybody hates Jim right. Hurd. I get that, but the yeah. Steiners coming to pro, um, prominence, Steamboat uh-huh. coming back with their, for that gotta, trilogy. The stuff with funk. Cool cactus here. Oh yeah, cactus better get <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> yeah, Jim Hurd had some good ideas too. I mean, Tony, you were on Family Feud. Uh, there was some mainstream sponsorships with Coors yeah. and with right. Brews and right. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Uh, he did, but he in- alienated so many people. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's not, I mean, that's the shame is for all the, the interesting or, or, or positive things that he did in wrestling, people will just remember the negative because of his way he handled people. That's right. He didn't know how to handle people. Did not. Absolutely. That's very well said. So it turns out no matter how good you are at your job, if you're an asshole, that's what people will remember. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Ian will never have that problem because Ian's one of the nicest people ever in wrestling. As a matter of fact, too nice. I've said to Ian, I said, yes, I've said to Ian, I said, you're almost too nice to be in the wrestling business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. And I'm, yeah. you know, I try and I try and take that niceness on the school board. The only other active school board member that I'm aware of is, uh-huh. is Rick Steiner here. Yeah. So we have that in common, right? He's on Cherokee County school board in, uh, Oh, oh, brother! Uh-oh. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them out. What? Where, where did these guys come from? <laughs> and, and Tony, do you know who they who those are? Because I, I think I I recognize maybe Rip Rogers. Maybe no, okay. that's not Rip. Never mind. That's okay. not him. Brian well, Clark's get, one of them. Okay, maybe we get a shot of him. Also, the the door that you see way up high, that door, we we talked about this because the door was so heavy, and when they would trigger the door, it would slam. Boom. Hard, and I remember thinking and telling some guys, I said, "Make sure that you're not in that doorway when it slams, because it's going to break your neck or break up." It was just so big and so heavy, 
And you'll see when it comes down, how fast it comes down. And there was a concern that all the action and all the movement around it would trigger the door yeah. to come down on somebody. Look at it. Look oh, at him. Oh, on the my God. The on the what cage. a shot. Oh, God. I think the switch has already flipped. It's already been. <laughs> Like people have banged around the cage enough that it just yeah. fell on its own well, already. Well, the, the, I, I'm talking about the door, the switch, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. a gimmick, which was a gimmick switch. I think what they did, they snuck in a piece of uh, tape because they're supposed to throw the switch and the door come down. Right. Uh, they snuck in a piece of gaffer's tape or peewee to tape it up. If I recall, because it kept falling down. What do you think of this cage design, Ian? Do you like this cage where it looks like you can't climb over the top because it comes in, but it's, it's a little looser than say big blue from the WWF. It's a little more flimsy, a little more pliable. It was always cool to see it in WCW because oh, now the, uh, the gimp is tied up, uh, is handcuffed <laughs> to the outside. <laughs> and the so it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it was cooler. You had slightly better sight lines. Yes. Um, I love the Thunderdome. With uh, Flair Sting, Muda, Terry Funk. That yep. was great. Same cage, right? Just shit gimmicks up there? I, I think so. Yeah. And yeah. then that one lit on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and Muda blew it out with the mist. So, yeah, this this was cool, though, because you didn't see cages often in WCW. Whoa. And the a cactus. Golly, yeah. dude. I mean, yeah. the, the camera didn't even focus on that bump. What, what a bump that was. Yeah. He's, was nobody liking. Oh, here's the referee. So, so uh, Foley, uh, has announced that he's at least considering one last match. Tony, did you see that? He's trying to get down to 275 pounds and maybe make one more match. What about that? God, his knees are gone. Aren't they? I, I, I mean, I, I think the dude's been through the ringer for sure. Yeah. I but, mean, I've, I've seen him try to get around. I don't, I don't know if he's adding to replacements or not. Wow. Dropping a hundred to a hundred pounds was the original goal. I think he's. 366 last he posted and he's trying to get down to 275. Wow. And uh would like to do uh one last match around his 60th birthday, which I guess would be like next June. Right. That's kind of interesting to think about. One last match for Foley. Yeah, God bless him. I'd love to see the match. There was oh, see, see? It's, it's, <laughs> it's showing it's down. It. Yeah. Why are we and showing we're showing it? it? Uh who knows? I think we're showing it to to tell to tell the people backstage, look, there it is. Look at it. Go make sure it's back up. Who knows? And and that was we were on that for five seconds. Like yeah. that was that was the yeah. longest five seconds of the yeah. of the show so far. Yeah, I don't know what we said to try to explain it, but uh, maybe maybe like well, the power's not on to the switch yet. The switch has to be powered up, so they will they will power it up here soon. What do you think? What do you think is the hardest thing you've had to explain, Tony? I always try. I try to explain the ladders sometimes that are under the the ring and yeah, and the tables. But I sometimes I just run out run out of explanations. Well, I think in the days uh, the days era uh, ladders and, and tables under the ring, I, I think fans expect them to be there. And in the in the grand scheme of what we're doing, yeah, they're there to be <laughs> used. Okay, uh, but I think the hardest thing, obviously, I've ever had to explain is is the Yeti. Well, yeah, I mean, having a guy wrapped up in gauze, butt fucking Hulk Hogan is, is 100%. beyond hunt. It just, you know, and he was a mummy. That was the other, he wasn't even a Yeti. A Yeti is, is frozen. And he, he came Thank from you a, for that. Ian. He came from a big <laughs> ice block, yeah, but right. then he was a mummy. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> I don't know. That was an unforgettable night in many, <laughs> many ways. Well, Paul, our friend, Paul White probably should have died. He fell backwards off the Kobo hall. Yeah, I know. That was another thing that was hard to explain. <laughs> and I remember hitting the talk back and saying, Hey, he's, how do we explain this? He's not even wet. <laughs> if he fell into the river, the Detroit river, he's not even wet. Uh, and, uh, that was a hard thing to, to do, but that whole night was okay. Who we got here. There's a look at him. It looks like Brian Clark is up front to the right um, to, to his right. Yes. It looks like. It looks like referee Jimmy Jett, who uh, was a referee, had the nice hair, uh, oh, was, yeah. was in there as well. Yeah, it looked like he was in there. So, But as you can see, they are so stoic. They are not moving. They are really prepared to take the body 
the body. <laughs> Listen to you. Well, that, they got a stretcher, right? <laughs> Look, the switch electric- just fell we're again. Gonna, we're going to electrocute a motherfucker. They flipped the uh, switch okay. uh, up, and then as Cactus started climbing, it fell, and you could see it yeah. on camera fall. Cactus just pushed yeah. it up. Yeah. Ooh, the diamond stud just got hit in the diamond mine there. There you go. Cactus put it up for us. And it fell again. It fell again. And Bill Apter's wandering around. He got right in there getting a nice oh. shot of uh, Cactus yeah. Jack. Yeah, Bill's always wandering around. Can you uh, imagine the Steiner brothers if they got into a fight with Eligante, what that would look like? Yeah. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Like, I don't give a damn if he's a giant. It's okay. the Steiners. There you see on the right, a referee is putting up the. <laughs> and he, I think he's got some tape he's putting up there as well. Pee Wee climbed up. He's climbing back up. Oh, up, down, back up. He's just holding it in place. He has yeah. no tape. He's holding it in place. I, well, I, for some reason, I remember tape. Remember that maybe somebody finally gave him. Oh. We're trying to shoot around it now. Yeah. Nope. Oh, there's Pee Wee. Yeah. Got a great shot from the referee who's <laughs> repositioned himself. Uh, Tony, have you ever had reefer eye? <laughs> no, I've <I'm> not. <laughs> you see, here's, oh, here goes Pee Wee's climbing up again. Here's the deal about uh, something like this. A lot of times, uh, we are not prepared. There goes the referee again. Watch. See, now they got gaffer's tape. See that? <laughs> okay. Taping it up. My God. Silver gaffer's tape. Anyway, a lot of times you're not prepared for the inanimate object. A perfect example is this, and it happens even today. Here comes the finish. Ha- okay, let's watch the finish. He's, he's got, Rick's going to do like a belly to belly to switch Abdullah. Yeah. And then here it goes. We'll track this audio because this is going to be silly. Steiner's got to fight for his life. Oh, he belly to belly to He's got Abdullah in there. He belly to belly. What strength by Rick Steiner. <laughs> Again, he's trying working to with an animate object. Steiner's really the mounting at Dula here. here. Going crazy <laughs> in the opening moments of Halloween Havoc. Cactus Jack, he thinks Steiner's in there, but it's Abdullah. Cactus Jack thought it was Rick Steiner, but Abdullah. My gosh. Think about what he's doing. Look at the fire on the canvas. He's getting cooked. It's getting cooked. I think he's well done, guys. That he's, hard. <laughs> he's getting cooked, and so is the promotion. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That thump? That thunk? Yeah, that was was the the, cage door falling. That was the cage door falling. Wow. What's amazing to me is how cheerful you are. He's really dead, guys. (laughs) We killed a motherfucker (laughs) live on pay per view. Those goddamn Braves ain't got nothing on us. (laughs) That's that's an all timer, Tony. Like you, you've had some great, you have some great calls. I think back to Goldberg winning the title, but that, I mean that. Abdullah getting cooked. Yeah. That's that's up there. <laughs> I will forever and ever think of that uh that boxing clip, Adrian Broner, I think his name is, where he's he he says, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting cooked right now. And <laughs> that is uh I mean, look at the silliness here. Because Abdullah, yeah. as I recall, as the story goes, he did not want to do a stretcher job even after being electrocuted. That's why you yeah. remember it, Tony? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Meltzer says Abby was then supposed to do a stretcher job to sell the explosion, but of course he didn't. And instead beat up the ghouls after the match. Yeah. Now, aren't you sorry that one man gang quit so he could be put in the chair, get amnesia <laughs> and come back as a baby face reverend. Uh, yeah. So the idea that you get electrocuted live on pay-per-view and then fight your way to the back. Yeah. My God. We used to take this a little too seriously. I think. Yeah. I I was going to say that when you work with, with something like the switch, even today, have you guys noticed that when we have handcuffs and they go for the key, Oh God! they they never get that. It's like, I can't find the key and I can't get it in. I'm thinking, Oh brother, we're over time now because you're searching for the fucking, there he goes. (laughs) This is is 12 on one. Yeah. (laughs) With a man that's. 
that's just the, been electrocuted. And yeah, he's just stepping on motherfuckers. Face. He don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you little juicer rip off. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is cactus electrocuted him. Yeah. And they're, and they're still friends. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, never. Yeah. yeah. Get me yeah. out of here. And then Get- they, they, they stay friends for the next three months. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it, was an, it was an accident, by God. Who and there an were seri- look, look at the serious look on our faces here. My God. That one, and what a way, fans, to kick off the third annual Halloween Havoc event. Now, we've got a lot of tremendous action still to come, <laughs> I love this, this including four championships Tony. that will be decided. I love that we just had, this is real, guys. We just had a Chamber of Horrors match to open a pay-per-view with an electric uh-huh. chair. Yeah. But we got to keep this crowd hot. So if you're thinking what I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking PN News needs to tag with Big Josh to take on Johnny Rich and Joey Max. Whoa. That's what's coming up. Okay. How about Missy Hyatt and Eric Bischoff here? What about these costumes? Missy was Missy was gorgeous. Really was. I missed a call from her yesterday. I gotta give her Did a buzz really? back. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her I said hello. She's yeah. she's uh I met her at at all in yeah. and, uh, very nice. That's the first time I think we met Tony. We were supposed to, I, myself, Excalibur and yourself, were going to be the team for that night. And somebody had Georgia football. Yeah. Right. So Cody wanted me on it and I couldn't do it. So, but there you go. How about that? We missed I, it. Missed I out. Was, I was disappointed. I, I thought, man, that was my one chance. Cause I didn't think I'd be in wrestling, but for four or five years. And then <laughs> look, look how it all worked out. I thought when ring of honor was done in 2021, that was it, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah. I, I'm glad too. I'm uh, glad you're still, uh, still with us doing some stuff. Oh. Get to see you now and then. Yeah. And I get to rag on you for the Phillies beating the Braves the last two years in the playoffs. We just saw the young pistols there. Was there any pressure from, uh, from Turner to change the name from the Southern boys to the young pistols. I always found that kind of abrupt. Uh, no, I don't think so. Cause they, yeah, yeah I, just... I know what you're saying. I think that was more of an Eric thing. Okay. Eric, Eric was, and of course, well, Eric didn't have anything to do with it, but I, Eric talked to me about many times. And I guess Jim Hurd felt the same way that try to get rid of the Southern connotations. Yeah. Try to be more of a nationwide company. It's kind of like NASCAR leaving the South, which is what they did and alienated all their fans. And they're suffering for it now and going nationwide. The creatures. Yeah. This is a throwaway tag team. I really like the young pistols, the wild eyed Southern boys. One of my favorite tag team matches of all time is them versus the midnights at great American bash 90. I think it's damn near watch. perfect yeah. ta- tag match. Yeah. But I've always been fascinated by Steve Armstrong. He's sort of like the Armstrong that got away. Like we know Scott stuck with wrestling and, Uh and became a big time referee for years and years Uh and years with, with WWE. And we know road dog is doing really big stuff with WWE, even to this day. And we know Brad who everybody universally praised as being one of the best performers of all time. He unfortunately passed away way too young, but then Steve's just kind of hanging out there. And as I understand it, not doing much wrestling, but it's like, he's the, uh, the one that got away. Gotta listen to this rap real quick. Oh goodness gracious! He's over here. The fat lady sing. He and Josh are the friends when they do their thing. Yo baby, yo baby, yo, yo baby, yo baby, yo, yo baby, yo baby, yo. All right, what's up, Chattanooga? Tony, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking what you're thinking, I think this Halloween, our producer, Dave Silva should be P and news. I agree. He would crush Dave, that. Yeah. Dave, you need to remember that shot. Oh, there's Christine. You know her? She's the, no, but she's the rap contest winner. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, story that I've told before, but it bears repeating right now. Okay. First ever dynamite. October of, of 2019, JR and I are in catering. We're sitting down in catering and we're sitting with Tony Khan and Tony talks about this night. Wow. He talks about his memory of me wearing a pink bow tie 
He talks about the memory of Cage, and he talks about PN New. Wow. And he said, uh, get ready. He says, do you remember his rap that night? I went, no, I don't even remember him being on the card. He said, so here it is. And he wrapped it for us as we're sitting there. And JR and I look at each other in like total disbelief. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> he remembered the rap. Not only rem- he remembered what PNU said. So it just, that, that just showed me a lot about, this was Tony Khan's era, the early 90s. Oh, God. He loves this his era of era, WCW. Yeah. Right. I think like 91 to 94 WCW is his yeah. sweet spot. Yeah. Right. Look at PN News. Get wow. Him. Can Dave Silva do a drop kick like that? I saw him do one yesterday. Oh, very good. <laughs> Tony, I got to ask you, there's a, a holy grail being sought for on the internet in terms of wrestling footage. PN News was on BET. I'm not kidding. On August the 4th, 1991, it's in TV guide listings. It's in the wrestling observer. He and Johnny B bad appeared with Teddy long to talk about the plight of the black athlete in professional wrestling. Now, obviously of those three gentlemen, um, only one of them is African American. Uh-huh. Was there any, was there any reception in WCW at the time? Meltzer said it was great, except for the fact that only Teddy long, was representative of the group that was on. Yeah. I, I don't remember that at all. And, and so that yeah. had to be, uh, you know, in today's society and today's wrestling society, they would have had to get an approval by a company to be able to even go on. BT. Right. Yeah. And so it's, people have been looking for this for years and wow. I, I've reached out to contacts at, at Viacom at MTV. Mm-hmm. Um, they said they likely have it. Just nothing's marked in their, uh-huh. in their vault. Wow. So, well, if anybody wait. can find it, Ian, it's you. Cause I know you've, <laughs> you've searched the world for things. As well, hang far on, as hang footage on, is concerned. On, on. If Ian can find anything, hypothetically, yeah. can you help us find a six man tag team title? Okay. Well, I, I thought you were going to ask for a, a, a video that we've also been looking for Conrad for years. Can we talk Would about you- that on the show? No, no, we okay. cannot. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was just mine and your so- secret talk. It is. Okay, it is. Then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But PN news, I'll, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it, it, with, with everything with YoMTV raps and this era was kind of fleeting, you know, with the, the, uh, the neon and stuff, he was shockingly of his time. Like as a kid, I absolutely loved PN news. It I worked for kids. Yeah, it did. And I didn't get the, the quiche of it. I didn't get that. It was kind of corny. Um, I loved it. You know, also he did a rap with salt and pepper. Yeah. Ring. Yes, he did. And they were big at that time. Absolutely. Yeah. You kind of blew my mind, Ian. I, uh, I'm not saying this to be funny. I promise I'm being sincere. I'm legit yeah. colorblind. And this entire time I thought P and news was a black dude. You're telling me P and news is not a black dude. No, I think he's, uh, I think he's uh Polynesian. Yeah. I, right. I, th- wow. I think. Okay. Yeah. Roll Todd. Yeah. Did <laughs> you, so <laughs> you're colorblind Conrad, but did you know when they, advertise the creatures they advertise them as cavemen no i did not know that the, do you remember uh, that at all these Tony? are some interesting <laughs> no. looking what do you mean what here what did they say we're gonna have cavemen come in <laughs> okay well they, well on the control center uh, uh, that eric okay. bischoff did okay they, they had like the stereotypical like toga like fur yeah. toga oh and wow and the disheveled hair and so when they showed up like this i didn't i was that uh, these uh, aren't the creatures <laughs> even though the creatures had never been around did we notice the, did anybody know but me, the power bomb by big Josh that time? It was unbelievable. Was it not? It was <laughs> See, like <laughs> he didn't, he didn't throw him on his back. He threw him on the back of his neck. Can you imagine Ooh. if that guy didn't have the demons, if he didn't have the monkey on his back, what yeah. Matt Bourne could have done in professional wrestling. Yeah. He was really good. Really good. Everything he did looked believable. I mean, yeah. think about the impossible task. Like. On the surface, when you hear about doink, you have this perception and you're like, oh, this is going to be the worst gimmick ever. And then you see how he executes it and you're like, well, no, that's actually pretty good. He <laughs> literally <laughs> fell on the guy. <laughs> and then Josh stood on him. It's amazing. He, because he, he was going down, buddy. <laughs> There's no way to stop that. Dude, I would I'll, love to see Silva do that for Halloween. Me too. Come I, I, I think. Still to this day, when I think of Big Josh, I think of 
two bears. Yes. Uh, yeah, walking down, pissing all the way down the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Who As got he, to clean that up? Who uh, that? I would have been Klondike. Yeah. Oh, wow. There we go. Look at watch this it, big watch, splash. Watch this fall. Flash, Ooh. And once they got him in their corner with their premier move. I love the camera. Couldn't even keep up with it. He <laughs> fell quickly. <laughs> Tony, you think I'd be professionally jealous of you getting to call Sting's last match, but uh -huh. I'm genuinely uh, jealous of you getting to call. What was it the record scratch or this? The, what did PN News call it? The skipped record or whatever oh. it was from the top row. Right. The fact that you remember the name of the movie. And uh, yeah. Well, welcome <laughs> yeah. to the program, Tony Khan. We uh, yeah. are glad you're <laughs> exactly. joining us here today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think everybody has a similar Tony Khan story. Uh, a friend of ours told me about the first time he met Tony and he just rattled off all the specifics of the first time Tony saw him live. It was a, a, a non-televised event. It was a house show. And he remembered every minute of the match, what the entrance uh, was, what the gear was, what the finish was. And yeah. the guy was just sitting there in disbelief. Like, how do you. Cause it's not like you could just go fire that up on a VHS or something and watch it. It was not televised, but yeah, he remembered it all so well. I mean, I don't think everybody who listens knows that Tony Khan legit has like a photographic memory. It's pretty, it's yeah, pretty crazy. It is. It is. I was, uh, I was a little worried when ring of honor shut down. I thought that'd be the selfishly be the end for me. And then I, I was a lot less worried when Tony bought it and not even from my perspective, but just that it was in good hands. And when we met for the first time and we were getting ready to do the first TV taping under his watch, he, he started asking me to reassure some of the creative decisions. And he had, he started recalling slim J who's a great talent. Who's Unbelievable. Been since, yeah. But beat for beat match for match matches that slim J had in 2002, 2003 about Eli Isom, who's kind of a young, a really good young under the radar talent that we had toward the end of the original ring of honor era. And just making sure that he got the stories right. And he he was on point with everything. Uh, kind of like Miss Alexandra York is with that word processor that she's got in her hand there. That's a brick, buddy. That's <laughs> yeah, it is a paperweight these days. This is back before she became, of course, Mrs. Dustin Runnels. It's before uh, she's Marlena, but man, mm -hmm. she still looks like a star. I mean, whoever decided yeah. to put her on camera, it was a good call. Thank you. Um uh, Ole Anderson and I uh, worked on that one. I mean, you know, I know what you mean. Okay. So was that, was that in the makeup chair, which you were ragging, oh, ragging me about? <laughs> she was a makeup artist. Absolutely. Yeah. Ian, I, I walk around the corner, <laughs> Ian sat in the makeup chair. I went, son of a bitch. I learned it from you, dad. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. Okay. <laughs> hey, is this the best shape Bobby Eaton was ever in? Look at him. He does look good. Doesn't he? So does Terry Taylor. Look at yeah. that. This is. I mean, I think I this like is the best Bobby ever looked. This is amazing. Yeah. I, uh, I think I should say, and I think it's probably well known by now, but, uh, little miss, uh, Alexandra York and, uh, her, uh, ex-husband Dustin have now had a grandchild. How about that? Yeah. How about wow. that? So that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Look at this. What'd you Hit think me. of this version of Terry Taylor, Ian, doing like a, a poor man's million dollar man gimmick to me? It made it more interesting. I like the black hair. I like the, uh, it reminds me of the kind of the villains, the neighbors from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, that yuppie feel mm -hmm. um, and that vibe. So uh, that was, as again, as a kid, that was easily translatable as I shouldn't like this guy, not because he's rich, but because he's a jerk. Yeah. Um, so that, that really, that went well for me. And I love Bobby. I mean, the first time I ever met Bobby, he came backstage to a ring of honor event in 2015 and he was asking to meet the Briscoes and he, he wanted to go out of his way to tell Jay and Mark that he thought that they were the greatest tag team he'd ever seen. And this was nine years ago, you know, even before the rest of their legacy was written. And so just that I got to witness that I got to take Bobby over to meet Jay and Mark. And that was such a cool thing for me. To witness, you know, to meet Bobby and then for him to show his appreciation to Jay and Mark was really neat. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah, he was a he was a big fan. Wow, look at these snaps on these arm drags. Sorry, I've lost my chihuahua here. You guys, no, we're we're, we're enjoying the uh, majestic work of the late great 
Bobby. Oh, <laughs> now it. She used to use a word processor, but that looks like a straight up laptop here. Yeah, that that was a laptop. But it's got to be the absolute shittiest laptop of all time. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel had a great idea that we never. That we never. Of course, remember, uh, this was around the era of the Desperados, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, his idea was uh, that we can. Uh, uh, hey, I, I'm looking up the uh, fastest PC at the end of 1991. 50 megahertz. Jeez, 50. I, I'll tell you that it, we have that kind of technology in calculators now. You know, the <laughs> I'm at Staples. I mean, can you imagine though, like comparing just the technology that's in your pocket right now for your cell phone compared to that big old 25 pound laptop? It's crazy. I'm glad you clarified cell phone there because the, the, all that talk earlier with the, the sponsor and, you know, as a, I was an award winning sex educator, right? Where I don't you? know. The, I was, in fact, on my wall here, there's a. What's your a volume up, Tony? Yeah. So. Under Moses Malone, my two big prize possessions, my Moses Malone Sports Illustrated blown up. And then that little tiny plaque, I won the President's Service Award at NYU for my sexual health advocacy as a peer educator. It's the highest student honor you can receive it at NYU. Well, congratulations. I had no <laughs> idea we were hanging out with Dr. Ruth today. <laughs> Way in the background, you're in a well. You did something when you were calling, uh, Lois. Nope. Baby Jessica. Maybe it's time for a little refresh Jones. We got a 15 minute Terry Taylor match right here in the middle of the pay-per-view. I don't know. So the, I remember enjoying this match a lot because throughout the year, both these guys were in the, wow, look at, that was a wrist lock arm drag. What was that from Bob? That was amazing. He's just moving. what do you think of the ramp? I thought it was pretty cool during the cage match. We actually got to see underneath the ramp. I don't remember ever seeing that before, but what do yeah, you think of the it, ramp in WCW? Were you a fan? I was, it made it different. It made it stand out. Me too. On TV, uh, it made the pay per views feel bigger because you go from pro and power hour, and you just kind of have the the regular walkway, but you knew something was up when the ramp was up, and you know it, it was interesting too because they would do the New Japan shows shortly after that, and the Tokyo Dome had the big ramp at yes. the time, so it was cool to see. Oh wow, it can be even bigger and cooler. But I loved the presentation. I loved later when when Cactus and Max Payne and the Nasty Boys would would really take advantage of the ramp outside. Man, I can't believe uh, Bobby's going. I would have yeah. really loved to have seen him get his shot or his spot in the WWE Hall of Fame before he left us. Certainly deserves it. Wow, look at look at this. Oh, jeez, on the ramp. Unbelievable, man. He he went the equivalent, probably three quarters of across the ring, and jumped over that ramp. Did you you guys see Bobby on the ramp? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, we can hear you great, Daddy. We we had a our, we had a dog here that. Uh, well, your internet's not playing fair anymore, Tony. You sound like Max Headroom. Gonna be shilling new Coke soon. Yes, he is. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, you know, let me mention our affiliate partnership with Fanatics. Maybe we can get Tony enough loot to upgrade to business internet. We are. I've glad got to business have. internet, some bitch. Well, <laughs> maybe we can get enough money for Tony to pay the bill. Uh, check out <laughs> shopsportsmerch.com. You can shop for confidence with your favorite jerseys, caps, shirts, jackets, hoodies, and more. Support your Braves. Uh, we wish we could have did that a little more in 1991. Or your damn twins or anybody in between. Maybe you're good like Ian and you're looking for those Phillies. We got you hooked up. Shopsportsmerch.com. 
same great pricing and service and products you expect from fanatics. But when you check out our special link shopsportsmerch.com, it really helps our show. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So hit the QR code. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll take you right there or look for the uh, episode description in today's episode. We'll have a link there or just type it right in your browser shopsportsmerch.com. So Ian, I think these are great wrestlers. I mean, Terry Taylor, I don't think ever had a bad match and nobody could ever accuse Bobby Eaton of that, but the, the, the structure of the show, the format of the show where we just saw a guy get electrocuted and now we're going to have a, a Matt classic. It, we're asking fans to get engaged again, and it doesn't seem like it's working. No, this is a wonderful match and not just the action, but there's been good ebbs and flows. Yes. There's been, uh, you know, some, some nice near falls. Everything makes sense. Uh, but where do you go once, once you make somebody, once you cook somebody, I mean, yes. if, if, if a lumberjack and a rapper can't get the crowd back into it, fighting creature, you know, it's going to be a, an uphill climb. And that's kind of what I remember about this show is that. There was so much excitement. Ooh, um, you know, especially with Sting, all the talent, Sting and the Steiners right in the first match. And those were the top of the top for me when I was watching. Uh, I, I think what it says about uh, WCW is that we were trying to out entertain <laughs> the entertainers. Does that make sense? Yes. In other words, we were trying to be WWF and we couldn't be. We just did not have the tools to do it. Do I still sound like Max Headroom? No, you sound great. Thanks. I had some, somebody who was working on the internet uh, this morning at the house. I'm thinking, oh, I, I went out and talked to him like at 8 o'clock. I said, man, I got to do something at 9. He said, you'll be fine. So, York rules. How about that? Wow. wow. Hey, in my real life, man, I'm helping people save money. I'd be glad to help you too. If you're looking to buy a house, if you're looking to get out of that apartment, if you're looking to sell your house, if you're looking to fix your credit, so you can buy a house. If you're looking to get some pro tips on how to save money to buy a house or how much you need to buy a house, or maybe you're just trying to save some money on your current bills, maybe get rid of some credit card debt, maybe consolidate a car payment. Maybe you just need some cash to do some remodels around the house. Whatever it is, we can help you at savewithconrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. But man, if we can't help you save some cash, we won't waste your time. But you can get a quick quote, even talk to a live person right now at savewithconrad.com or give us a call toll free 888-425-0105. By all means, give us a buzz. Ask for me. We're right here on the parkway in Huntsville, Alabama, but licensed pretty much all over the country and able to help you remotely. Uh, seriously, think of me next time you need something in that area. You got a friend in the business. You can also just drop me an email, conrad at savewithconrad.com. If I can be helpful, I'd love to do that. I'd love to let my family help your family and don't just take my word for it. Go check us out. we got an A plus with the BBB and you can read all of our five-star reviews. There's more than a thousand of them at conradreviews.com. Uh, but save with conrad.com. That's your hookup, man. Smokes. And this place is packed. I mean, cage match says there's 8,900 people here. Yeah. This, this was a good venue because it looked great. It was very steep on either side. Uh, and, uh, so it, it always looked great. Yeah. 8,900, uh, is the attendance here. A lot of this is uh paper. $45,000 was the gate. Oh, he's small. Yeah. It's like five, five bucks a ticket after yeah. counting all the paper there. Yeah. And now we've had not to be honest. I don't want anybody to think that we have it all the time, but we've had million dollar gates now. Sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, you think back even, I know Conrad was there. I think Tony, you may have been there as well. I don't know if we, but the, you know, the Madison square garden with new Japan. Oh yeah. Honor. He was there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a million dollars. I, I was running all over the place that day. I didn't even get to see my wife. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was doing all kinds of stuff and we didn't even have a production meeting that day. It was, that was one of the weirdest days of my life. Uh, uh we, uh, uh, Gary Chester, for some reason, walked up to where we were and was standing there. And I went down to see him and he took me down in the locker room. That's where I first met Jay White. And I, I saw, uh, Bing or Haku yeah. down there and met a couple other guys too. Gary Jester's got a really good taste in music. Have you ever, have you ever talked music with Gary? No, I've not. Yeah. 
He's uh he's kind of folk rock kind of guy. Folk rock. Yeah, he loves like uh REM, you know. Okay. That kind of stuff, but Athens, the, Georgia. Yeah, the Jayhawks. Yeah. Um another good band kind of in that category. Wow. Yeah. Tony, uh, at this very time, like this same week where you guys are running Halloween Havoc, it's the first time Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair ever wrestling. Of course, that's happening wow. for the WWF. When you knew they were doing that match, did you think, I mean, what was your reaction to that? I mean, it was a dream match for so long, and then actually my, was a real thing. My reaction was they did it wrong. I, I thought they should have built it up, and... I, I guess they, they first wrestled in a, on a house show, right? That's right. It wasn't on TV. I mean, I thought that to me, Flair and Hogan was a big deal. Yes. A big, big deal. And I thought they should have built it up to be on a WrestleMania or something, but they didn't. And I remember when I heard they were doing it at a house show, I remember when well, that does just doesn't sound right. And I don't know if they did that because one business was down and they needed a pop or two, they just did not want to recognize Ric Flair as that big of a star and put him on WrestleMania immediately. Meltzer would say the first, second, third, and fourth meeting of Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair took place in Dayton, Oakland, Los Angeles, and Tempe respectively this last week. Uh -huh. I just think that's so interesting that, you know, while you guys are putting together the chamber of horrors, the competition is putting together the first ever Flair Hogan match, but it was on a freaking house show. Right, right. That blew me away. And I, yeah. Again, I don't know the reason by, by it. The uh, the WCW slash Jim Crockett Promotions version of Tony, which is still in here, uh, believes that they did that. But they did it that way because they did not want to put over our promotion. Right. And uh, did Meltzer give a reason why he thought that was like that? No, I mean, he thinks uh, you know, he wrote a ton about it. The idea that, um, uh, let me find it here. When it was over backstage, one wonders what both men were thinking the match, the subject of fantasy writers, ideas, and words and wrestling magazines and newsletters for years that appeared would never happen. Finally has did, and will continue to happen for some time to come for both. It signals the beginning of a big run, perhaps the beginning of each man's last big run. For one man, the thought just weeks earlier were that wrestling was still going to be a part of his life, but a much smaller part only for occasional appearances like Arnold in bodybuilding. He'd stick around, but he wouldn't want to be known as just a wrestler, but instead an actor who rose from his junk sport to superstardom, but reality hit hard and he's not going to be Arnold. He's bigger than his junk sport, but the best he'll ever be is the main man in his junk sport. For the other, there are no other thoughts other than business. And to him, it would never be a thought of as a junk sport. Just being the main man is good enough. In fact, it's all there is. It's just that anything less isn't acceptable. So he's just, you know, jacking off flair there for a bit, but yeah. it is interesting to think that Meltzer thought, oh, this will be both of their last big run. Yeah. Yeah. And we know well, Meltzer, Meltzer was obviously smoking when he wrote that. Cause that made no sense at all. So. Well, it's interesting because you look through the seventies and eighties and Tony, we talked about this when we talked about Greensboro Coliseum, there was, there was still wrestlers into their forties, into their fifties on those cards Yes, mm -hmm. and, and the people, you know, it wasn't, it's not like the, it's never been like the NBA or, or major league baseball where when you hit 35, 40, you retire wrestling's always had stars and continue to treat stars as stars. Um, even through their twilight days, whether that's Bruno or Pedro or right. Buddy Rogers or anybody. Bobby could throw those working punches, buddy. The best. Oh, God. They are, they're sweating right now too. I yeah. don't know how they kept their balance. Those ropes got to be soaked to everything. Well, I, I can tell you that after what we've seen. So far, these two guys knew what we had just seen. Yes. So they, they are really kicking it in high gear. Blair yeah, was always good about doing that too. Look at the fans clapping. They're getting into it. Sure. I mean, it started out really slow, but you're seeing the fans get with it now. Yeah. Can you imagine, what? you know, I, I'm not trying to be negative, but can you imagine the damage Bobby did to his body with that top rope leg drop all those years? Oh my God. Like I've heard Matt Hardy say that if he could, if he had one move back, it'd be that one. Right. Ooh. 
and think about all the back surgeries that Hogan has blamed on that leg drop, but that leg drop climbing right. the top rope and then jumping sky high and coming right down. And I know he's skillful and it's the art of deception and all that, but look at this shit. Hey, there's here nights comes. hitting him dim, and here it comes. The Alabama jam. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, beautiful Bobby. I'm not Great being fan funny. pop. How about that? It's got to be one of the highlights of his career. I don't think he got a ton of singles wins on pay-per-view. Let me tell the story about Dutch Mantel here. Dutch had an idea. Dutch always had creative ideas. Was just one of the funniest, most creative guys I've ever been around. And he said, let's do it. Wow. He went right, <laughs> went right down on Terry Taylor's empty head. So, uh, that, uh, Dutch said, he said, she, he said, let's put the, the desperados back in a room and with, with Alexander York and ask Alexander to input the, the strengths and the weaknesses of the desperados. You know how they had those old dot matrix printers yes. where they just, yes. okay. And she would type in, here are your strengths. And it would go, yes. that was it. He said, well, what are our weaknesses? She would type in and go, he said, she walk out, you come back later, you're still going. I love that. He said, you come back another time and the room is filled up with. I love it. <laughs> and I'm, we're just fighting to the paper and arguing. I thought that would have been a great visual, great uh, thing to do. But of course we did. We that did a, so uh, a fundraiser once and the, we, uh, it was like a cash thing. And so we had uh, one of those money counters in the back. And so you'd, you know, get to sort all the bills and run it through. And there was a guy who was a runner for the event. And he said, man, this is awesome. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, it's just cool because I was thinking about the visual of running the money for this fundraiser through the machine. He goes, now, if I was to just go empty my bank account and run it through there, <laughs> <laughs> same principle you're talking about with the printer <laughs> just, just all those sheets piling up check out wow. this braze moment from michael hayes huh hey it's a big deal uh this area you know i know that fans listening you know it's hard to really get the context but the braves had been so bad for so long tony yeah long suffering fans mm -hmm. and i know people are hearing this and thinking yeah, but who cares? This is in Chattanooga. Well, that's like a fucking hour outside of Atlanta. I mean, it, yeah, it is. like if you're, if you live in Chattanooga and you're a baseball fan and you were raised in Chattanooga, you didn't have a choice. You're a damn Braves fan. Of course. And so for them to finally be in the world series and it's game seven, but you got tickets to go watch a wrestling show. I can only imagine how many grandfathers and dads were mad and pissed off at their sons, but like, I gotta be a good dad. I'm going to go take him to CP and news and Johnny be freaking bad. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Hayes came in with a sling on his arm, which is interesting. Um, John, boy, that's, that is a cool freaking robe from Johnny B. Bad. You got yeah, but, that. but that blaster on the left, it's like it had the robe covering it. So he just uh -huh. fired it right in the condom there. <laughs> uh, Meltzer would say, you could tell these guys worked overtime, putting this match together. Michael Hayes was in the corner with his arm in a sling, even though he wasn't hurt, but they needed to establish Garvin as the face here. Since Garvin had come out by himself, bad may have gotten more cheers. Plus they wanted Hayes out of the Van Hammer match because he would have gotten an overwhelming amount of cheers and nobody or somebody somewhere is determined to shove hammer down our throats, even though nobody will take credit. Like, Johnny B. Bad was getting a lot of cheers too. It yes. was not abundantly clear that he was supposed to be the villain. I mean, he's got the blaster, he's, he's got the cape, he's yeah. got yeah. That's for I mean, kids. If you're a kid, you love that. Hundred percent. I I didn't under it. It literally was. Hey, Dad, why are they booing this guy? And he just kind of chuckled and kind <laughs> of he kind of knew what they were implying. Um, mm -hmm. But. Yeah, he was great, and he's got the sequins. I love a good sequined outfit and tassels. He's got the tassels right on the butt cheeks. Got to admire that. Columbus, Georgia, Dusty Rhodes and I are in the back, and he's in a dark match or 
yeah, a dark match. And, or or as a job guy or something, Dusty looks at me and points at the monitor and says, Little Richard. He said, Can, look at that face. He's Little Richard. We're going to make him Little Richard. Okay. You go for it, you dumbass. And it worked. <laughs> okay. Speaking of dumbasses, look at the guy in the sling. Oh, he's going to get up top. He's going to chop. Is he? Yeah, he knows. That's well, how you le- do it. At least they're not pointing at each other's. You ever notice when Michael P.S. Hayes goes on top and Jimmy jammed, he just points the fingers at Michael's P.S. Hayes. <laughs> it, it it went on for four, three, four years. It, yeah, it was almost like the, the Hogan pin. You were right. Yeah. That's, all, that's all we know right now. We hope, fans, uh, for you watching this pay-per-view spectacular that we will have a report on Barry Wendell before we go off the air. I thought for sure they were going to give a Braves update right there. I, me too. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting time in wrestling 1991 was. I mean, this is also, as we're watching this pay-per-view, some of the, um, some of the stuff was, was being uncovered about the Zahorian trial and, you know, all of the the case against Vince McMahon and distribution, but there's even something here in the observer that sort of shocked me of 8,500 Anavar tablets, only 330 were used for medical reasons of 28,000 of meth testosterone tablets. Only 230 were prescribed. Of the 4,700 cc's of testosterone, only 504 were subscribed or prescribed. Of 13,200 of Anadrol and Winstrol V tablets, only 140 were prescribed. It's crazy when you think about that. Like, hey, we need 13,200 of those. Okay, show us where they're going. Well, here's the first 140. I can't really tell you after that. That's pretty That's amazing crazy. when you think about that ratio. Like, how did they think they were going to get away with? That? I mean, clearly they didn't. But goodness gracious, right. she had a bill. Hey, uh, there's a friend of mine who works in radio. Oh, he, wa- he was he was a friend of mine at one time. Taking some pretty big bumps. So anyway, um, the friend of mine when. We we're talking about steroids, and this is more about Barry Bonds and, and right. all of that. My my friend who had played college baseball kind of shrugged it off. He went, so what? He said, if I was in college, and this was years ago, playing college baseball, and somebody told me that there was a drug out there to make me a better player, a better performer, I would have taken it in a minute. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I look at the steroids in the steroid era and I think, you know what? It's, it's wrong to do it because of your body and your health, but so what? So what? I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I played at NYU, uh, a little Rudy Pooh, you know, baseball program. And there was somebody on the team that was involved in that. It didn't make him a better player. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, it's, uh, so you really still got to put the work in and you really still got to, have your baseball instincts go. And that's, that's, what's always interested me about the steroid thing is you, you still got to have the hand eye coordination yep. like McGuire and Sosa uh, bonds took what t- a thousand swings a day or something insane in the batting cage. Yeah. Day after you know day. what? He, he didn't need steroids. He was a great player before steroids. Yes. As we know with mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. So anyway, I just, I look at the steroid air and I go, eh. Well, it's funny because it, it's funny what people care about. I got asked yesterday on Twitter, Hey, um, now that the rock is back with WWE, is, is he going to be subject to steroid tests? And I replied, I couldn't possibly care any less. Like it's not a, it's not a physical competition where, where we're going to do, you know, blunt force trauma to each other's faces. It's not a contact sport in a traditional sense. So it's not like. He who hits the hardest wins, or, I mean, this is showmanship and you know, if we're going to be testing Hollywood actors, then okay, we should test wrestlers. But otherwise I, I just think, Hey, that's their choice. And I know what you said is true, Tony, like, Oh, it's bad for your body, but you know, so's lack of sleep. So's taking yeah. a flat back bump. So's running the ropes. So's overeating. So's yep. 
drinking. Right. So's opiates. So's, I mean, right. shit, if we're just going to say, oh, you just got to do what's good for you. Go eat some fucking grass and drink some water. Here's the deal. <laughs> it's all, it's all about filling the pockets of people like Mike Dawkins. Yes. There you go. Uh, nothing happening. Son of a bitch. Gimmick nothing attorney happening. at gimmickattorney.com. How dare he get a plug here on the show that he didn't pay for. Exactly. Not only that, his office is in Toledo, freaking Ohio. Home as of much money nobody. as he's made off of us. He should be in LA right now. He runs the city fairness. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's funny. The only thing I know about Toledo is Mike Dawkins and the mud hens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. There's also, there's also the walleye, which is their, uh, hockey team. A hey, shout out to uh, at gimmick attorney over on Twitter. Uh, if you're looking to sue a motherfucker mm -hmm. or defend yourself against some other motherfuckers, gimmickattorney.com or at gimmick attorney on Twitter. Or if you're looking to trademark your name for some bizarre reason, your man. Yeah. I, I mean, might... I've seen some crazy trademarks. What's the dumbest trademark you, you don't have to say who, but what it was for Tony. Cause we, I, I don't, I don't he's know. capitalized on a trademark craze and I'm really yeah. proud of him. It's very entrepreneur of him. Have we had what happened when trademark? Shit, no. <laughs> wow, Johnny B. Bad just dove three quarters across the rink with a sunset flip. Yes. Holy smokes. And couldn't get it on. on well, it. that's <laughs> he tried. Tony, you think I should trademark Rick a Bone Zone? I think that, you should. Is that something? Yeah. Well, yeah. The Rick a Bone Zone. As a matter of fact, I think he's trademarked that. And I think. We need to hear you rap before we go off the air. <laughs> yes. Yes. With one of your Willow Nightingale raps. <laughs> oh, I, I, on the same show as PN news, that would surely expose me. That would How many surely times is he going to do this fucking top rope gimmick? This is, I mean, that's three times in a row here. Goodness. Yeah, that's a, I know. Well, when you're green and that's all, you know, right. Go back to it. But hopefully Michael Hay, uh, Jimmy Garvin. Wait, I thought Michael that. Hayes arm is in a sling. Yeah, I know. Oh, he, he winked. He winked yeah. earlier. He took it out, punched, punched oh. Johnny. No, yeah, I'm with okay. you, but I'm saying, wouldn't you keep up the ruse a little longer? <laughs> <laughs> He's not even pretending now. <laughs> it, I'll tell you what, everybody is laying out here. They're taking these huge bumps. Is this, is this just cause I mean, the crowd got with Taylor and Eaton when they started to just turn up the pace, but everybody's diving to the floor. Everybody's hitting the ramp. It's pay-per-view, Ian. Big time. <laughs> Got to give it your all. It's the big one. Johnny B. Bad is, is bleeding from the mouth. Yeah, there's a little and bit of blood on uh, on Garvin's Jimmy arm. Yep. This is something that Garvin would go on to have a great career as a pilot. Who would have thought, right? I know. Absolutely. He told me once, because, uh, you know, he wasn't just like a, a regular pilot. He flew private planes for the uber wealthy right and he told me a story once about a uh, a family who traveled internationally and they got over there and realized oh my wife forgot her favorite shoes so they sent somebody to their house and then got it on a plane and flew her the shoes so she would have them in time for the event so it was like 100 grand to have the shoes that night oh my god and they were like, yeah, no problem. She just really is excited about those shoes with this outfit. If you could just get it here. You know how the fans pop with that false finish there? Oh, man. Wow. Look at that big right hand. Yeah. Left hand. From instinct. His foot was on the rope and long pushed it off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Johnny B. Bird. Oh, but they're going for the post match. They want Michael Hayes and. And big pop for Teddy Long getting knocked yeah. out there. <laughs> and Craig Leathers missed the shot. Ugh. I don't know if Craig was the uh, director or not on that missed shot, but I, I'll gladly blame him. Not a big Craig Leathers fan. I heard he's not, he didn't think much of you either. I'm glad. He says you were nothing happening, motherfucker, and your breath stinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it, when it comes to him. Well, my bet, my breath may stink, but I'm a pretty good kisser. Well, he says you I gotta, found that out. 
<laughs> yeah, <play. laughs> just starting rumors over here. We're and learning you end up. The the initiation in AEW, Tony in the makeup <laughs> chair. Give me some sugar. Not yeah. to the divas, to the other announcers. <laughs> I'm sure that's how Taz got broke in. <laughs> speaking of speaking of trademark, has he trademarked the color orange yet? Dude, you know he has. Uh amazing. Rick hey, the other the other day, Conrad, the other day yeah. during warm ups, okay? Yep. Yeah. He was in such a foul mood. Okay. He was in such a foul mood, it was freaking hilarious, but I gotta listen to Miss. Find him. Oh, beautiful Bobby. Stop, stop. Please tell me. Please tell me. Where's the WCW Phantom? Who's the Phantom? How about Dorothy and Myra Jack? I don't know. What? What? About. Look, you've been in the dressing room. I know you know where he's at. Tell me, I want to be the first. Hey, Missy, I'm going to celebrate. I just want a match. Please help me out here. Don't disappoint. Go to the ring. So what was he going to do with that pumpkin? I was going to celebrate, but, but, but how, how do you celebrate with a pumpkin? I'm just, everybody has their own way of celebrating. I don't know. I mean, there was that stem sticking out on it. What was, well, wait, what are you suggesting? I'm still suggesting that we see more of lady blossom here. Man, who would have thought at this point he would become stone cold and set the business on fire. Now, he's a fantastic in-ring wrestler here. I'm not arguing that, but you just see this guy walking around with that robe on and those little S's on the back and, the, and, and that ponytail. And you fast forward really just a handful of years. I mean, five mm -hmm. years later, he's a different human being. To me, it tells me that it's the stark difference. It is, it is center stage that they knew how to make stars in WCW. They did. They knew how to make stars. I'm talking about this era right here. Right. Yeah. What do you add on uh, Austin Hall boots? He and we see Dustin stomp into the ring and some boots that look like Barry Windham or his dad before him, Dusty, would wear. Austin Hall, I think, was the guy. What'd you think of his style of boot? They're pretty cool. Um, it it changed it up. You know, we were I was more of a WWF kid, so everybody there kind of had the, either the the faux leather or the patent leather uh boots and and then kind of the vinyl -y look later and so anytime anybody had cowboy boots it was a it was again kids visual cues like yes. all right he's probably from texas or he's probably from yes. the south so it was real easy it was a real nice visual cue right away and and seeing dustin here was cool because i'd seen him in the wwf a year before well they didn't miss that camera shot did they tony holy no, smokes. it's hard to it's hard to yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was cool to see Dustin kind of, it's kind of grow up and, and fill out. And now we, now we work with them and it's, yeah. that's, that's kind of a, a mind, uh, mind melter for me coming in yeah. at 37, having watched him all my life and working with him now. He can still do a lot of great things in the ring too. Yeah, he can. Sir. Yeah. Still can move, man. Back then, you know, he, they called him the natural and Dusty wanted the natural <laughs> because <laughs> That's wrong. Hey, on in <laughs> okay. So anyway, he used the term, the natural that dusty gave him because dusty thought he was just natural in the ring. He could, could move. He was naturally gifted. So the, the, uh, the moniker, the natural is pretty legit. For him. I, uh, I don't argue that at all, but it is interesting because here in 1991, Dave Meltzer saw something a lot of people didn't brother. If there's anyone in the U S with the potential to be the next Ric Flair as a total all around performer, it's Austin because he's so advanced and has incredible presence and ability for someone just two years in the business. Rhodes isn't too far behind him either. How cool is that, man? He saw it in 91. Well, listen to a couple of things here. Uh, number one. These kids had a chance to work a lot more That's right. and, and develop their craft, uh, than they do today because of all the house shows we did. Uh, look at that bump, that, that Lariat and the fans respond to it and they, they, the fans legitimately clap because it was a hell of a move, but anyway, but now they don't have a, they don't have a chance to, to develop their craft like they used to. But 
I really think so. And I don't know how you feel about this, Ian. You can tell. You can tell when a guy or gal can move in the ring and cannot. It doesn't take long, and it doesn't take many matches uh, to show that. No, and it's always intriguing to kind of see the look. Um, but then, you know, once the bell rings, it, there's footwork, there's timing, there's intensity, there's different things. You don't need all of it, but you just, you need some of it. And what, mm-hmm. what I like about Austin here, everything is just laser focused. It's intense. He looks like he's trying to win. And a lot of wrestlers don't, you know, when they're, when they're that new, don't get that the whole point is to try and win as weird as that sounds, as strange as that sounds. Um, he's focused on winning the match and I mm-hmm. think that's what makes him good. And that right. seems so simple, but yeah. And just, what, what, ki- what kills me today is this. I've talked about this many times on this program. Uh, it's not the leg slapping. I get it. You know, uh, I know Jr. doesn't like it, but what gets me is a wrestler will make a great move and then they'll turn to the camera and they'll hit their chest or they'll scream into the camera and think, if you were in a real fight, would you do that? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> and to me, it's it's turning your attention away. Turning your attention away from the fight, to me, is just not authentic. And I, I just don't. Now, they may, <laughs> Dustin may do something like that here, but. Obviously, it's not complete, you know, what we're looking at on cagematch.net, but. Yeah. Cage match thinks this is the 190th match that Austin had. Wow. So he's, uh, 23 months in the business and he's had 190 some odd matches oh. that we know about. I mean, I'm sure there's others that cage match missed, but the point you were making earlier about guys just work more frequently. He was running like nine dates a month back then. Not, I mean, that's not even accounting for the ones that cage match missed that were just spot shows here and there. Yeah. Right. But I mean, the, the idea that a guy these days is coming up and cutting his teeth, that he's going to work nine times a month. That's probably unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, a shout out to cage match, man. Oh, a real resource. Unbelievable. I know yeah. that people dunked on it uh, a few months ago, but they're uh, because of, uh, you know, Tony Khan admitting that, that he goes to the site, but I mean, it's like guys, if you've been paying attention, Tony Khan's a wrestling fan, like you and me, that dude was on message boards back in the day. He's a observer subscriber and would send in results. Like he really loves it. He's not some corporate stuff suit who decided, Hey, there's money to be made in wrestling. This is a real passion for him. He's, he didn't need the money. He loves wrestling. Yeah. Right. Sure I, doesn't need the money. I'm often in fear that I said something negative to Tony or engaged him in what folks call a flame war. Cause I was also on the message boards uh, <laughs> w- way, way before I should have been. My dad let me on the internet in 1995. Um, and, uh, and my name wasn't Ian Riccoboni on there. So I, I remember his alias. And once it was revealed to me, I remember interacting with that person. I don't remember being negative to that, to mm. that alias. Uh, but I often, I often think it's, it's such a small world and, uh, yeah. Who would, who would have known all these years later, right? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to go back to Tony. I said, do you know that Ian yeah. used to troll you on the old message? board? I, uh, <laughs> I told him that the one time it was right as a, uh, right before the Calgary collision and I was in Japan and he gave me a call and he. He said, are, are we, you know, we squared away because I have, I have a unique deal. I think, you mm-hmm. know, that Tony and right. he, I said, yeah, everything's great. And we we're talking and I said, Hey, Tony, I just, just in case it ever comes out. Um, I think me and you used to talk on the message boards <laughs> and he said, did you ever, did you ever say anything bad? I said, no. And he said, all right, then we're good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so listen, we got to know, uh, what was your, your handle? Was it, uh, your, Mac daddy long legs or, <laughs> you know, pimp tastic 24 seven, or what was this silly name you had? Oh, geez. Um, I was usually Ian the bat boy. Cause I was a bat boy for a minor league baseball team, an independent league baseball team, wow. uh, the, Al- the Allentown ambassadors. Um, but before that it was probably Rick Abani because my dad had to sign me up for everything. And he just used our last name. Cause no one else, you know, it's one of the 
That was a weird Italian name. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Message board kid. <laughs> Message board kid makes good. That's right. There's a couple of us. There's others that won't admit it, and I know who they are. So <laughs> I'm not going to out them here. I don't okay. out people, but <laughs> there's a couple uh, of us. Uh, we have, uh, there's one comment here. It's from my uh, goddaughter, Brooke. Uh, Ian, do you remember the first live wrestling show you attended as a fan? I do. I do. Okay. Um, so we went to the Allentown Fairgrounds in 1991 and we went and we stood outside we we went through the fairground gates and it was the outdoor fairgrounds it was next to ag hall where they used to tape the tv and i the music started going and I, I chickened out and i was so overwhelmed by everything I, I i chickened out so that was technically the first one the the first one i sat through was a wwf superstars taping uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, either June or July, 1994 at Stabler Arena. Wait a minute. You, what, do you, what do you say when you chickened out? What, explain what happened. Yeah, I was four and uh, I was so excited by the noise and so excited by everything. I, it was almost, it was like seeing a baseball field for the first time. I got that rush, that overwhelming rush when you walk through the gate and you see the ring. And you kind of realize that you're going to see something that you wanted to see for a long time. But at four you don't know what to do with that. You know, you don't. So once the first music hit, I think it might've been Jim Powers. Honestly. Um, I just, I got overwhelmed and I run out, we, run out of the building crying. Is that what you did? I grabbed my mom's leg and, and, uh, my brother tells the story a little bit better than I did, but we watch, we ended up watching. There's a little hill where ag hall sits. And if right. you stand there, you can actually see into the fairgrounds. So when the big acts come to the fairgrounds, like we, you know, Def Leppard, the first person to come to my mind, but I think Taylor Swift played there maybe 10 years ago. Um, people will just stand there and watch in because you don't right. have to buy a ticket there. So I, we, every couple, you know, every 10 minutes, we kind of peek in and, and watch to see what was going on. Oh. Yeah. Hey, we're seeing a great match here. No uh, doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Two really, really top performers. The only match that uh, was ranked higher, I think, was Lex Luger and Ron Simmons for the world title. Really? I got three and a half. This was three and a quarter. Or I guess Bob Eaton and Terrence Taylor got three and a half as well. Everything was better than that Chamber of Horrors, which uh, Dave gave <laughs> negative two stars to. You know, if you start the show with the Chamber of Horrors match, in comparison, everything else is going to get it going to get great ratings <laughs> no well oh, that lady that lady got one of the polls from the chamber of horrors did you see that no yeah she got one of the sticks the <laughs> <laughs> souvenir but tony why do you think that was did you think it was because they didn't want to set up and tear down the cage and yeah that they wanted to yeah. yeah and you got to put the title on last right i mean that was the thinking there sure you got to put the title on last and yeah they wanted to get rid of that <laughs> well, watch watch your, watch your camera movement there uh, she was at a star cast, wasn't she, Conrad? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to her. It's the first time I had I had seen her in years. I we uh, I don't think it was it wasn't someone that, that I booked. Uh that was uh I guess she had a book out and a vendor bought a table and brought yeah, her in. Right. But uh yeah, we were we were fortunate enough to have her. I mean, it's been a who's who of who's been a star yeah. cast at this point. Bump it, Dustin. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. Was did did you know what you had when Steve came in? Because I remember one week I turned in. I used to have to watch on the New York channels, and because we didn't get an out, we didn't get TBS in Allentown. Even if I wanted to see it, I could only follow on. I think it was CBS New York, maybe. And uh, you know, one week Steve Austin's on. The next week he's the TV champ. It seemed like everybody knew he had something. No question. We all knew, but. We knew we didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like, sounds like my love life. If you know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, but you've done okay. You got beautiful kids. Oh, thank you. You are a, uh, a member of the school board. You're a high upstanding member. I've never seen you frown in my life. You're always smiling. Uh, uh, the only, I the only negative to you is that you have no idea about baseball. <laughs> Even though you did play college. Baseball. Oh gosh. Maybe no gosh. Well, did you like, 
<laughs> you know, you know something we haven't talked about on this show, uh, Tony, but it was actually pointed out to me by mm. Mr. Ian here. Cause he's, mm-hmm. uh, been consuming our podcast for a while. Yeah. You and I used to watch a lot of old Hulk Hogan stuff here on the program. Uh huh. And we started to refer to a part of Hulk Hogan's anatomy as his thermos. Yeah. And Ian pointed out that Hogan had a, a quirk for a lot of his matches back in the day. Ian, do you want to explain? Well, you see, the yin and the yang symbolize the positive and the negative, right? And when you put them, it almost looks like a six and a nine. And so when Hogan would hit the big leg drop, like Survivor Series 87 with Butch Reed, um, with, you know, some of his other great classic bouts, he, he would put, it would almost look like it was the yin and the yang, like the six and the nine, uh, his head being the, you know, the yin and the other person's head being the yang. It, he Long story short, there was some, there was a 69 pin happening there and I'm not sure why he did it or when he started, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or a reason he did it to slaughter, but not always they fought, you know, a dozen times, but only select matches. He did it at WrestleMania. <laughs> we need to go back and take a look at, uh, Hogan and Butch Reed. No, listen, it was when he pointed it out, I started watching and I couldn't unsee it. Yeah. And I so think you, you and I had seen one, right? You and I even I mean, joked about it, that it was big boot leg drop thermos. Right. And that was a combination that was put to me by Ian. But of course, Ian didn't want anyone to know that we were talking <laughs> about Hulk Hogan, putting his gimmick in people's faces. So I just outed him here on the show. Like a true friend would. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's well, I'll tell you who originally pointed it out. Um, Colt Cabana and I were on a trip. Uh, we were going to Chicago. We we're on a bus, part of one of the ring of honor tours. And I was watching a Twitter clip or something. And he goes, did Hogan just do what I think he did? I go, what? And I rewound it. And he was the leg drop, the butch read, and then the, the thermos pin. <laughs> wow. And so all these years, it just flew right under the radar. Wow. Huh. <laughs> and a shout out to Colt Cabana. One of the great guys, man. Yeah, no doubt. I'm, no doubt. I'm so glad he's with us. Absolutely. You know, he um he almost saw the birth of my daughter because he Yikes. Had a, okay. Was, had a, he a, was he an orderly or something? <laughs> wow. No, no. So so Tony, you and I talked about how I missed my son's birth by twelve minutes. And I right. think I think that'll live with me forever. And I think that's a lot of the insecurity that that drives some of the decisions I've made over the years. Okay. Uh but uh, my daughter, my wife was, was two weeks late and we had to record ring of honor, but I said, Hey, I, I can't go on the road. This is the old ring of honor. And Colt said, well, what if I fly to your house? And, and I said, what? So he flew to his house and he got ring of honor to reimburse it. And our executive producer came over and, uh, my wife went into labor two days later. So he narrowly missed seeing my wife give birth to our daughter wow. live and in person. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. just had a we just had a time limit draw here. Oh wow! On uh, uh, what was a great false finish match, and very very well done. Think about that too. The hot both guys are juicing. It's a TV title match. They go 15 minutes. It's a time limit draw. Meltzer is in the Observer saying these guys are the next Ric Flair as far as all around performers. And I know what you're thinking. After a Matt classic with Steve Austin and Dustin Rhodes and a Matt classic with Bobby Eaton and Terrence Taylor and some silly shenanigans from the chamber of horrors. How do we possibly follow all of this? Bill Kazmaier and Oz are up next. Oh my God. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say a, a, a promo for battle bowl, the lethal lottery. Let's fuck up Starcade. Thank you. Okay. Hey, that's the first time I saw Liger though. I got Liger on the wall and, uh, okay. There you go. That was, See? That was positives, right? Positive. Right. Not, not everybody hate. Well, not everybody something. hate it. You, one of my, this. one of my great moments. Go ahead. Let's he listen. Weighs 315 pounds. The incredible Oz. We hope you uh. fans will make plans on being with us. Oh, Starcade 91 lethal lottery. Oz. Yeah. The geographic location. Yeah. <laughs> Emerald City. 
Think about that. Two years after this, three years after this, he'd be the world champion. You know, one of the highlights of me being at the Conradison was being able to wear the Oz robe, the Oz robe, Conrad, you still have it. I do not. It, it, it wow. was uh, it was a trade. It was one of those that I thought I would never get rid of, but, uh, something popped up when I was like, oh man. And that was the only thing he wanted. Like he, he was not flexible. Cash wouldn't do it. Another item wouldn't do it. But my collector brain got the better of me. I know this was dumb, but at the time I thought Bill Kazmaier coming out with the world on him, like Atlas, that was pretty cool. That is cool. And Bill was a good guy and I liked him a lot until today. When I saw that he was from Auburn, Alabama. Oh, so fuck him. <laughs> I actually, believe it or not, WCW actually set him up to do a, uh, appearance at a mobile home dealer in Montgomery, Alabama. And, uh, my parents took me to, to meet him and I got my picture made with him in the autograph and the whole deal. But what was interesting is he was doing tests of strength or feats of strength or whatever you want to call it. So he would just pull like a mobile home himself, not an 18 wheeler, not a diesel, not a tractor, just him pulling a house. No big deal. Hmm. Probably handy. If you get evicted, <laughs> just call Kaz. That's right. You know, I didn't think about that. Yeah. If, if he had a pickup truck, he'd be your first call. If you were ever moving, <laughs> Hey man, hate to ask. He'd just <laughs> cut right to it. What time? <laughs> we all had a friend like that. Mine was a guy named Josh who was just jacked and he had the functional strength too. So, and he had a pickup truck. So if you needed, you need to move all of us called Josh. Wow. Yeah. If you don't want anybody to ever call you to help them move. Never <laughs> own a pickup truck. Problem solved. I never had a friend like that. I always had a friend who I could call on to beat up people for me. That was, that was what? Oh, absolutely. Why are you beating? Why are you getting people beat up, Tony? <laughs> well, that was Craigsville, Virginia, man. Oh, he was—he was our protector. You don't—you don't fuck with me if you knew that Larry was your. Oh, lover boy, times, Larry. A lot of times, it, it wasn't the actual beating; it was the actual potential of beating. Well, I, listen, I love Kevin Nash, Larry, but Larry why still, is this even a debate here? Larry still reaches out to me. Larry—he <laughs> sent me a text the other day. God bless him. One of my favorite people in the world. He says, listen, uh, what would you uh, got any advice for betting on pro wrestling? <laughs> I went, yes. He said, what is it? I said, don't in all caps. <laughs> uh, God, I'm telling you. We, we had those sponsors. The first AEW dark elevation I had, I had to, to read about how you could bet on yeah. the matches that were yeah, happening. Right. That was, it blew my mind. Yeah. I'm telling you, gambling, online gambling, oh my God, it's taken over the world, hasn't it? Yeah. We went to a Lehigh University basketball game. And my buddy flicked open an app. He goes, watch this. And he had a live bet available to him on Lehigh versus Loyola, Maryland. In the middle of the game, they were willing to take action on it. And yeah. I, th yeah, it was, it was crazy. You can uh, bet on plays now, Tony. Wow. Will the next play be a run or a pass? Bet right now call it micro betting. And so I think they're caps, but they want to get you engaged 24 seven. I saw this thing on 60 minutes, not too long ago. Cause I'm old. I watch 60 minutes, but they talked about how this one guy, when they studied his stuff, he made like 2000 deposits over the course of a year. So the dude wow. was making like seven deposits a day, which means he's losing money over and over and over and over and over to just keep betting. It's a real crazy. disease when it gets a hold of people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and of course, it's not uh, available in all states, by the way. But the the wrestling thing is funny though, because when that started to become a thing a few years ago, I had some degenerates in my life who would hit me up and then be like, "Hey, man, did you see you can bet on wrestling?" And I go, "Yeah." And they go, "Well, uh, just tell me who's going to win tomorrow night on on Monday Night Raw or whatever." And I'm like, <laughs> "What? Well, you know, people, you just call and find out and let me know." I'm like. I don't think that's how that works. Sorry. Yeah. I think that's what Larry was fishing for. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here's uh, the finish. Let's track give it. up in the round. Right. Ladies wow. and gentlemen, the winner of the match, the world's strongest human being, Bill Pazmeyer. 
nice guy, but what a misuse of Kevin Nash. Oh, unbelievable. What a, what a time <laughs> for you. WCW yeah. next up. We got Van Hammer and Doug Summers, Brian Pillman and Richard Morton. The phantom is going to return. That's actually Rick Rude to take on Tom Zink and believe it or not, Holly dangerously is making his return on this show. Uh, that's something a lot of people didn't think they'd see. The enforcers are going to keep the tag straps over the Patriots. And then Lex Luger retains the WCW title two out of three falls with Ron Simmons. This was, uh, this was a fun show, man. I appreciate you picking this one and spending some time with us today. Ian, uh, tell everybody where they can keep up with you on uh, social media and what you're up to these days. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. And, and I want to, I want to say this about Tony. Um, it's been a, an honor and a privilege to work with Tony in the last couple of years. Um, first time we met, I was really excited because I'd always looked up to Tony and, um, I did JR's podcast years and years ago and he said, well, who, who do you want to emulate or who do you, do you look up to? And I said, Tony Schiavone. And that's what, and <laughs> I'm surprised JR still talks to me and JR is a good friend of mine. Uh, but it, it's been, it's been really cool. And for those that don't know, and, and who haven't gotten to work with Tony, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try and make him blush here. Uh, in the Greensboro Coliseum, we had some extra time and we sat down and we talked a little bit about him going to the shows there. And I heard him talk about it earlier before we came on with Halloween Havoc and uh, just to hear the memories and the stories that Tony had of going to those events. Um, I have a lot of those myself and it, it was just, it was just awesome, you know, just being able to share that with Tony and, and that's how wrestling continues just from one person to the other. So if there's someone in your life that's into wrestling, um, take the time like Tony did, tell them the stories that you have. Carrie Silken, he lives right down the road from me. He does that a lot. We talk about him going to see Bruno and that's the closest I'll ever get to Bruno San Martino these days. So, um, it's just really neat to, to have that history continue. So I always appreciate Tony sharing that history with me and his memories. And that's why it's so much fun for me to join this. Cause I love working with Tony, but just to, to watch the utter crap <laughs> that was happening in WCW 91 on the lighter side of things, uh, just electrified cages, men getting electrocuted orderlies with powder in their hair. It, it, it take the good with the bad. And sometimes the, the bad is even more fun than the good. So I appreciated that, but I'm on, I'm on ROH every Thursday night. Um, you know, watch ROH.com with Caprice Coleman. Uh, he's my tag team partner. This will be, geez, I'm heading in my eighth year, um, as the lead guy there, the 11th year overall there. Um, the train keeps going. It's a great place to see the rising stars of wrestling and to see some of the best in the world. Eddie Kingston, Claudio, um, Mark Briscoe, the tag team division stack. Um, you just never know who's going to pop up. So I love doing that show and you can see me there. And every once in a while, if, if, if Tony, you know, if Tony has a problem with his eye, I'll hop in on dynamite. <laughs> and That's and right. Fill in, and fill in, so, well, uh, Ian, I appreciate you, buddy. You are, a, you're a good man in on many levels. And there are so few of you in wrestling. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, one quick Ian uh, uh, story was Calgary, uh, and Ian probably knows where I'm going with this. So I we go to the, uh, I think I sent you pictures, Conrad, of we were in uh, Bret Hart's bar, and uh, it yep. was a bunch of us. It was me. It was my son, Matt, Ian, uh, Bobby Cruz, who I really didn't know at that time. I got to know Bobby very, very well, and there was a couple more of us. So we we leave the bar, and it's during the stampede, so it's, it's jammed. It's like a carnival atmosphere. We're walking through downtown Calgary. Still, this to this day, that Calgary trip is one of my favorite trips in AEW. And we're going back, which is really exciting. So we're walking, and there's a place with hats. And Ian walks over and picks up that white hat, and we're all says, yes. Yes, Ian, you got to buy it. You got to buy it. You got to wear it on TV. And damn if he didn't do it. And Bobby Cruz looked at me and says, Hey, that's IR. <laughs> okay. So we started calling him IR. Do we call you IR on the air? Do we, do we say that? Nigel, Nigel, who's a phenomenal broadcaster, got it in. He yeah. got it in on the opening, on the establishing shot of the two yeah. of us. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was great. Ian just wore that big smile on his face, <laughs> that white hat. <laughs> I thought, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. IR and, you, and JR. And you took tremendous. You took a picture of me with Grimace with a cowboy hat. It was yes. a beautiful artwork. And, right. <laughs> uh, and Bobby Cruz was having us rate everything one to 10. 
<laughs> exactly. So Tony, on the on the scale of one to ten, uh, what type of person do you think Ian is? Tony, on the scale of one to ten, what did you think of that bar? So that's just <laughs> we had a great time. We really did. That was a blast. I'll remember yeah. that. I'll remember that forever. That was a great yeah, trip. Me too. Ian, thanks for so much time today. We had a blast watching bad old WCW with you. But Tony, right now, it looks like it's about that time. We can't go anywhere until Ian Riccoboni raps for us. In the Riccobone zone, I'm feeling zen. Tony and Conrad doing what happened when. From Allentown, not doing crime. That's why I diss other podcasts all the time. Ooh. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> we're just, we're just, next week at a time. We'll see you next week on What Happened When. We come to you each and every Wednesdays on Westwood One, but Mondays at free only on Patron. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, ad free shows. Dot com. For the first time ever, StarCast goes international. Oceania Pro Wrestling and Visit Victoria present StarCast Down Under, set to take Ballarat Victoria by storm from April 11th through to April 14th, bringing the StarCast experience to Australia. And with all the staples of StarCast, that have made it a wrestling fan's dream destination. Meet and greets with your favorite wrestling stars of yesterday and today. Live stage shows including a Sunday with Bret Hart, a retrospective on his Hall of Fame career, including a special watch-along celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Hitman's legendary WrestleMania 10 match against his brother Owen. Also including an audience Q&A with the excellence of execution. We'll also have live wrestling shows, in-ring action including Mickey James's all women's show her and a special supercard bret hart's australian stampede all this along with the photo ops autographs merch and memorabilia making ballarat the place to be this april never before has a weekend like this taken place in australia until now starcast down under presented by oceania pro wrestling and visit victoria tickets are available now visit starcast.com for more information Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like Title Chase, Eric Fires Back, Conversations with Conrad, and The Insiders, plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early? You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus, ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch-alongs, Q&As, and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today, and hey, when you do, the first week is completely free, adfreeshows.com.